you have found what lights you up. I'm your host, Sunny the Life Coach, and I'm here because I see you searching for something or someone out there to help you feel better, something to take away the pain that you're feeling, the inadequacies. I know all of the things that happen in life can leave you feeling empty. Your search is over. This podcast is all about finding your own freedom and power to love yourself enough to shine in the ways you were always meant to, the ways in which you are already fully capable of. If you're ready for some real talk, some serious truth bombs, and a few F-bombs, you are in the right place. Let's do this. Let's get lit. Hey there, welcome to episode 65. So, are you traveling this summer? Or whenever you're listening? Where to? At the time I am recording this in June 2021, it seems that the floodgates have opened on travel, which is an amazing thing because we love to do that. And last year, We did not leave the state, so we are really feeling some wanderlust. However, we have to consider that transportation is dicey once you reach your destination. At least that's what we are hearing. A lot of rental car companies sold off inventory in 2020 because no one was traveling and they were trying to stay afloat. Now, there's a shortage of cars shortage of houses. Things are a bit crazy and everything is inflated. Just some things we had to think about when we were pondering where we wanted to go this summer. And so we decided that we would keep it drivable and simple this time because it's hot as fuck in Texas now. Seriously, it's like the switch was flipped and it's just gross. We are headed to the mountains of Colorado. Change of climate and scenery should be fun. The day this episode is released is the day we'll be on our way back home. So I thought it would be fun to share, to explore synchronicity as some things have lined up for us so that we may just have an amazing experience. Of course, it's going to be amazing no matter how it plays out. Going into it with that mindset, that's what we do. The mindset of having an adventure. We plan things to the point of where we are going and what we will do while we are there. And then we just allow things to unfold as they will. That's what happened in June 2019 when we last did air travel. We visited Puerto Rico for the first time and it was fantastic. Not only was every excursion that we signed up for simply wonderful, but we also experienced some sweet synchronicity. You know, when the moon and the stars and the planets align in ways that you didn't even expect, when the universe just sends you gifts that you didn't even know that you wanted, yeah, like that. Our son had a best friend from the time they were toddlers. No joke, they clicked and were joined at the hip when they were in the infant room together in daycare. And how we learned about this friendship was when we developed a roll of film. Yeah, that's still a thing. You can still buy disposable cameras. You can actually still buy film, so dust off those 35 millimeter cameras if you still have them. How fun. And we got the disposable camera at the suggestion of one of our baby's teachers. She said she would take pictures of him throughout the day so we could see what he was up to while we both worked. And this wasn't one of those places where you could remotely log in and check video cameras from your office. That's not exactly a bad thing not to have because we did have that feature with the first center that he was in while we were waiting for a space to open up in the one where he found his bestie. And quite honestly, it was not only a distraction for me to check in on those cameras, but I also didn't like what I saw most of the time. And what I mean by that is one one day I logged in and I saw him in a swing and no matter how many times I checked throughout the day, he hadn't been moved from that spot. He was getting zero interaction and 
it just wasn't a great environment, but we knew it was temporary. And so we just wrote it out. And, you know, his forever center, if you will, did not have swings. So I was really happy about that. They didn't have cameras, but they also didn't have swings. Good thing. So I didn't really care about not having remote camera access after that experience. But when his teacher at his forever daycare offered to take photos, I was on it. And when we developed the pictures, we saw the same kid in just about every shot. They were hanging out. I think they were like six to nine months old at the time, just getting around to creeping and crawling. Needless to say, our son Connor and his friend Ian remained besties until we moved to Texas. And I think the boys were around seven years old at the time. So flash forward and we're in Puerto Rico in 2019. Of course, I'm posting daily pictures on Facebook and Instagram as one does. And shortly after my first photo dump, I get a text from Ian's mom. Hey, we're going to be in San Juan on Thursday. How long are you there? Well, we were leaving on Saturday morning. So we made arrangements to meet up on the beach on Friday. Their first day there and our last day there. In San Juan, Puerto Rico, the boys hadn't seen each other in over four years. It was such a thrill. I get goosebumps just talking about it again. Seriously, it was such a magical moment just in a short window of time that just so happened to line up exactly for that experience to take place. It was so very wonderful. And I think of all the synchronicities that had to take place for that to unfold so perfectly. Ian's grandmother lives in Puerto Rico, but they hadn't been there in over four years themselves. They scheduled their trip. We scheduled ours. Neither party of adults had shared with the other what our summer plans were. We had kept in touch over the years, but it just was not very frequent or consistent, just checking in here and there around holidays, birthdays, and random occasions. I know that it's true that Ian's mom doesn't spend a lot of time on social media either. I mean, one time she stayed away so long, she had to create a new account because she had forgotten her login information, so... The fact that she was even on Facebook to see my posts about being in Puerto Rico was a bit of divine intervention, I felt. They had booked a hotel just down the street from ours. It was within walking distance for us to meet up with them at the beach. So crazy, yet at the same time, not at all crazy. An example of life just unfolding in the coolest way possible. And I had a memory pop up this morning from that day, and it made my heart sing. That, my friends, is why I will not give up social media. It can be a channel to amazing things. Yes, there's a lot of shit posting that goes on, that's for sure. But I've said this before, and I'll say it again. My feed is wonderful, and it serves me well, because I only interact with what I love I don't engage with the shit posts. I don't argue with people, and I just generally don't react to negative content that shows up. Those algorithms that we all complain about so much also function in a positive way, too. I see so much of the best parts of humanity on my feed. I truly do. And I get to have encounters in real life because of it. It's like a conduit. And that's exactly how I view it. Just beautiful. And again, this isn't a matter of just think happy thoughts and rainbows and butterflies will surround you. You'll be like Snow White singing in the forest and all of the beautiful creatures will be drawn to you. I don't live in a fairy tale. I am very aware that bad things happen in the world. I do get down sometimes, just like anyone else. For me, it's more a matter of finding my own balance and tolerance for how much darkness I want to see. If you're a returning listener, surely you know by now that I spent many years wallowing around in the darkness, so now I'm more inclined to move myself away from that when I am able to. I'm not saying I don't want to know things. Oh, I do. 
I'm very aware of what's going on in the world around me. What I'm saying is that I don't allow myself to get sucked in energetically. It's a delicate dance, but I'm doing it and it's working for me. So back to the synchronicity. I think that presents itself in our lives when we are open and receptive to it. To expand a bit on my last episode, it also comes through trusting and allowing. See, we aren't the people who book every single moment of a vacation. Not that there's anything wrong with that. We plan experiences absolutely. We also work in plenty of downtime just to be. There's that being and doing that I've talked about. That's part of it. When I planned all of the things for us to do in Puerto Rico, I also spaced them out so that we'd have an activity or two one day, followed by a full day of doing nothing. Hang out at the pool and read a book, walk on the beach, kick around old San Juan, whatever struck our fancy in the moment. And our last Friday there, which I will remind you was Ian's first full day there, was one of those do-nothing days for us. We were open to receive whatever came our way. We had created that space, and man, what did come was nothing I could have scripted for that part of my movie. Like I said, pure magic. So we have the same structure for Colorado in that not every single day, hour is going to be booked in advance. We have two or three activities that we know we want to do. And the rest of the time, we're just going to leave open to be and allow whatever magic wants to come our way. Now, we do have friends and former neighbors of ours who live in Colorado now. And I did reach out to them to see if they were traveling the country in their RV this summer or hanging around the house. Well, it turns out they are, in fact, traveling in their RV. And last weekend, I asked when they would be back, when are they coming home for a few days before hitting the open road again? And it turns out exactly the days that we are going to be there. Because, of course, I was so excited to tell my husband about it. And he just shrugged and said, well, that was always the plan, wasn't it? Love it. I don't know yet how or when. I just know that it will happen. I'm sure of it. I trust that it will. And if for some reason it doesn't, well, then I expect the universe to deliver something even better. That's how this works. Something will happen, perhaps something we don't even expect, because it's all about releasing those expectations, being open and aware and ready to allow whatever is going to unfold for you is certainly easier to do with a vacation or holiday experience. You might be thinking this, but again, I gave you two examples in my last episode of how this occurred in everyday life for me, letting go and allowing it to be easy for you to do isn't something that has to be reserved for a special occasion. That's available to you every moment of every day. When you are either feeling resistance or finding yourself trying to control the how of your life, then it's time to pause and explore why you're doing that. Do you have expectations for how someone else is going to behave or what they're going to do? How do you think you're going to feel if they do what you want them to do? What if you could feel that feeling anyway? That is what it's about. It's about the vibrations we're putting out there every day. Hell, that's the vibe I've been putting out for decades with my natural resting bitch face that has people that I first meet calling me sunshine in a totally sarcastic way. This is... This is how I'm sunny now. It's a constant reminder to turn my light on. Most of the time I couldn't recognize that was the vibe I was putting out, that RBF, until someone said something. 
It didn't matter if it was a close friend or a brand new coworker. The code word in my brain was sunshine, and that told me that I was putting out a vibe of stay the fuck away. Well, I don't think that's how you attract synchronicity. Playing the game on that level, wearing your RBF wherever you go, keeping your head down and conforming to the matrix. Trust me on that because I've done it. Yet don't trust me on that because ultimately it doesn't matter what I say or how many of my own experiences that I share with you. What matters is your own acknowledgement of your experience and you sizing up your own life in every moment that is or is not in alignment with your purpose on this planet, in this time and in this space. And that is also my response to a thought you may be having about what I've shared with you regarding our Colorado experience. Well, how can that be synchronicity if you're kind of sort of planning something? Sure it is, because it is. Simply by being possible, potential, and available, it is. Because the very notion, the concept, the fact that our friends happen to be coming home only on the days that we will be there, and we haven't exactly kept in frequent contact either, about the same level as I had with Ian's mom, well, that's alignment. However it plays out is however it will play out, but the possibility, potential, and availability is already known, and that alone is a beautiful thing to recognize, to acknowledge. That, my friends, is where I think the magic lies. Seeing what is available, seeing what is possible, acknowledging and taking the time to honor that. And also, if you're thinking, well, the thing with Ian and Connor was about them and not about you. No, no. (laughs) It took the moms to pull it together. And I can assure you that we were immersed in that experience and we received just as much joy and appreciation for having it as those two boys did. In fact, it is because of their experience that we were able to have ours. This isn't about living vicariously through your children. It's about living vicariously through anyone else in your life or anything that is happening that you can see as a conduit or a channel for positive emotion, because that's still part of your movie. High vibes, feeling good, those moments, all of those moments, both big and small, are important to recognize and again, immerse yourself in because when you do that, you're sending messages to the universe that you want more of this, more of this bliss. Yes, please. All of it, all of the things worth more than all of the wealth on the planet worth more than any work promotion or material acquisition you can amass. And those aren't inherently bad things to want or to have. Just know that the greatest wealth comes from those moments, from alignment, from synchronicity. All of the things you carry with you for life. You can't take any of those material possessions with you when you go. Live it up amass all that you want to and also know that the best scenes are playing out in real time if you're willing to see them. As Rumi says, concentrate on the essence. Concentrate on the light. Ah yes, could it be that simple? I will admit that it has become easier for me to be open when I'm on holiday. It seems simpler to bask in the synchronicities that occur during those times in particular. I share these stories and this journey with all of you because I think it's important to do so. I kind of wish I had someone else telling me these sweet parts of life when I felt low. Someone in my life that I could trust. I finally realized that someone is me. So what I'm asking you to do is not to look to me or anyone else as a mentor or a guide, but to look within yourself because that is the key. You 
are the mentor and the guide for you. All of the answers that you are seeking are there, my friend. Start deepening your relationship with yourself and everything else is going to fall into place. I am sure of it. I'll let you know what happens on our travels because my eyes, my heart, and my soul are going to be wide open to receiving sweet synchronicity. Give it a whirl. Try it in your own life. Let me know how that goes for you. I'll drop my email address in the show notes, or you can also message me on Facebook and Instagram. I can't wait to hear from you. Until I do hear from you, I want you to remember to light up and shine on.